Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. Today's video is part of my handmade Christmas series that I started this year. And today I'm going to be making these adorable coffee or teacup gift tags. This is an idea I've had rattling around my head since Concord and Ninth released this set. So I'm very excited to finally be able to create them today. Now be sure to stick around because I do have a special surprise from Concord and Ninth just for my viewers. Now here are some additional products that I pulled out to be able to work with the Cup of Kindness die set. So I have here the So Lovely stamp set. I really like that handmade with love image. I have the festive corner die. I'm going to be using the poinsettia for that. Then I have the uh, Christmas cloche. I thought about using the bow. And then for some sentiments, this is off of the bows and holly. There's a couple sentiments on there I liked. And then we have Sweet as Pie stamp set, which has that gingham background. So the first thing I need to do is create my actual tags. Now for this, I'm really just using the Cup of Kindness dies. I have it for the larger cup. There's also one on there for a smaller one. I have the main piece and then I have the kind of uh, label that goes or the sleeve that goes over the top. Now I also have some cardstock colors picked out. I believe these are white wheat uh, cranberry poppy artichoke and I forgot the other name but I will have them all listed down below in the video description and on my blog. The first thing I'm going to do is create a side folding card base. So I have all of my cardstock cut to eight and a half by five and a half and I scored it at four and a quarter and I'm going to reinforce that fold with my bone folder. Now the trick to this is to take your die. I have my fold at the very top and the top of the die, which is a cutting edge, I'm going to place it so it is above my fold line because I don't want the fold to cut. I want this to stay all in one piece so I can create a shaped tag. So again, I'm placing that so that top cut line of my cup is going to be above that scored line. And then I hold that down with tape and I run that through the die cut machine. So when I come back, I have this adorable shaped tag. Now we have that fold in the center so that we can put a message in there or if you want to maybe glue down some money, whatever you'd like to put in your tag. So I have enough room on this piece of cardstock to cut another one. And I'm going to go through uh, a few different colors so I have a variety of them. I'll just repeat that same process where I'm putting that cut edge of the top of that die above that scored line. We want it above our folded line Otherwise, we're going to have two cups and not just one that's folded in half. What's nice about this size is that I can get two of these from each of these pieces of cardstock. And then after I'm done die cutting, I'm just going to trim off kind of that excess. And I can use those scraps to do some more die cutting because I want to decorate and embellish the front of the tags. Also included in this die set is going to be a topper for our cups or the lid. And for this, there's two pieces. You don't have to do two pieces if you don't want. That skinnier piece is actually just an additional piece to add dimension to it. So it gives a little bit more life to the top of our cup. So I am going to die cut that and I do it out of white cardstock. You could totally change this up to whatever color you want. I was trying to keep it just a little simple on my end. So I'm just going to do them all from white. And then I'm going to take that piece that's or the wrapper, I think that's called, that goes over the center. And I'm going to die cut that from wheat cardstock. I do kind of change it up between wheat and white cardstock just to have a variety, just a little variety. If I bring in too many colors, I tend to overwhelm myself. I'm also using my Hero Arts Compact Cutter because these are all pretty small pieces and it's just easier to use a small die cut machine. You're going to notice that mine is moving around and I'm going to show you later on what I do to fix that because there are suction cups on the bottom. Now I moved on to doing my flower. So there's two pieces to the poinsettia. There's a smaller size and a larger size. I'm going to layer them together to just kind of make it a little more full and create dimension. So the top layer, I'm going to die cut from poppy cardstock. I'm also going to be die cutting them out of white because I thought having some white poinsettias would be really pretty. So while I'm doing some die cutting here on screen, 
Concord and Ninth has been gracious enough to offer my viewers a gift code. So you can pick up some products, whether it's something you've been looking for or products that I'm using in the video today, and you can get 15% off with the code 15 and Mindy. I will put that at the top of the screen for you, and that's going to get you 15% off of your order. Now, this is only for a limited time. It starts today, which is November 28th, and then it's going to run through December 1st, 2023, and it'll end at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. I will also have that information down below and on my blog. Now here I want to show you where it's kind of hard to see. I'm actually cleaning the bottom of my suction cups with an alcohol wipe because when we put these suction cups down onto our work surface, it's picking up all kinds of things, whether it's bits of paper or if you have dust or lint or dog hair, embossing powder, it's picking all of that up. So as our suction cups are picking all of that up, it's making it dirty and not suctioning down to our work surface very well. So I cleaned the bottom of my suction cups with that alcohol wipe. And now that thing is not moving. Once it's suctioned down, it is not going to go anywhere. I'm moving on to creating kind of an assembly line process here. So what I have is the topper or the lid for my cups. There is a larger piece and then that skinny white piece. I am going to take some foam tape and trim it in half. This is the foam tape from Ulta New. And I'm going to place a piece of that foam tape behind that skinny strip. You don't necessarily need to have that skinny strip, but I thought adding that little bit of extra detail just looked really nice for these tags. So this is going to give a little bit of dimension to the front of the cup. I'll remove the backing of that foam tape, and then I'm gonna line that up towards the bottom. You're gonna see how those rounded corners match up. I'll do that for each of the toppers, and I was trimming the foam tape in half, so I really didn't go through too much foam tape or you could layer together bits of cardstock if you want to use up some of your scraps. I'll then move on to putting together my poinsettias. And I really love these because the die really creates a beautiful etched line on those die cut flowers. So here I have the dark and light cardstock. This was cranberry cardstock and poppy cardstock. All I'm doing is adding a dot of glue to the center and I'm going to place that over my dark layer. I think I did four red and four white. So I'll finish those up. And then I also, I almost forgot, I wanted to use that bow from the Christmas cloche. So off screen, I went and I die cut that out as well. That I did from poppy and cranberry cardstock so I could layer it together to once again kind of give that look of dimension. I did speed the video up a little bit because now I'm kind of getting to the point of doing a lot of gluing. And one of the things I really love about this bow is you have the freedom to kind of customize how the tails of that bow are going to look. So you can have them really go out on the side or you can bring them in a little bit, just depending where you want to put it or if it's going to frame a sentiment. I didn't bring in any glitter cardstock today, but I think that would look really pretty if you die cut the bow from maybe some red glitter cardstock or even maybe some red foiled cardstock would look nice and shiny on there as well. Once my bows are complete, I only have two of them here because I didn't want to get too carried away. I picked out the four different colors that I have here for tags. So I do actually have two of each of these I think I'm doing, and I'm going to be placing some tape, just roll up tape to the inside of them to hold them shut. I think I finish off the rest of them later on, but I needed them to stay closed so I can lay out those, what am I going to call it, sleeve? To lay out the sleeves so I can get an idea of how everything is going to look because I want to get my stamping and sentiments done before I attach those lids. I thought the best way to do this would to be bringing in a grip mat. So this is a smaller size grip mat from Waffle Flower. I placed that down into the bottom of my Misty. I made sure to remove that foam insert because we don't need that right now. And I do have that gingham background already on the door. I'm going to be removing that and kind of situating it to where I need it to be on the front of my card. I really only wanted this design to be on the front. I don't want it to be on the back. So I'm just going to kind of shift that up. I opened up my gift tag right now and I'm going to place it so that stamp is just on one side of the fold line. Now that doesn't have to be completely perfect because I am going to be putting the lid towards the top. So if you don't get a really great impression towards the top or 
if you know, you're just a little bit below that folded line, that's totally fine. We're not going to see that later on. So I'm starting out by stamping some cranberry ink onto the cranberry cardstock tag. And then this is going to be a really pretty tone on tone look, but I am going to have to stamp it multiple times because for one, it's tone on tone. So I really want to make sure that this design shows up. And plus this is one of the original uh, colors that Concord and Ninth came out. I've used it quite a bit over the years, so I totally need to be re-inking my ink pads. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is going to stain. Your grip mat, if you're using them, is definitely going to stain. I, I typically don't care for staining. Um, I like my things fairly clean, but it's, in this case, it, I just had to kind of suck it up because I really needed that grip mat to hold this kind of unique design down so that I could stamp that background multiple times without it moving. So I brought in my other colored cardstock tags. This one is the avocado and I'm stamping artichoke. I love it. I think, I think the green tags are probably my favorite and probably because it has the most contrast to it. I also brought in my poppy tag, my poppy cardstock tag, and I tried stamping it in poppy ink. Again, this is another one of the original colors that I'm pretty sure I just need to re-ink at this point. So instead of trying to stamp that so many times, I'm just going to bring in the cranberry. And I do really love the cranberry ink on top of that poppy. Again, I think my eye is just drawn to that stark contrast. Now I have most of my pieces done here. I did go ahead and stamp sentiments. I kind of varied them throughout those sleeves. I have the wheat cardstock in white, and you're gonna see in a minute here, just the different sentiments that I had used. Now I'm going through and I'm gonna be folding everything in half, and then I'm taking some uh, double-sided tape and I'm placing it towards the very top. So right under that fold line is where I'm placing that tape because this is where I'm going to be attaching the um, lid to my cups. I went through and did that to all of them and then I'm going to just use my craft pick to remove that release paper. I can then take the top of my cup or my lid. I don't know why I keep forgetting the word lid, <laughs> but I'm taking my lid and I'm placing that over the top and just how adorable is that? I absolutely love these. So I'm gonna go through, do that for all of them. I think I did try and do a white cup, but I, I just wasn't feeling it. It didn't work for me. I really like these Christmas colors. I'm just very much into the Christmas colors this year, the traditional Christmas colors. Now I also went through and I'm adding some foam tape to the back of those sleeves to kind of pop them up from the card a little bit. Everything else is really simple here. I'm not going overboard with decorating. So I think by adding that foam tape to these pieces here and there just really kind of helps bring them to life a little bit more. Now this is where I was folding up some post-it tape, placing it in the inside of the tag so that they stay shut while I'm attaching everything. Now we have everything laid out and I'm just going to start kind of getting an idea what I wanted to go wear. And I think I actually kind of forget some of them, but for the most part, I'm just lining up like what flower do I want on what cup, what's going to look right. I really love that handmade with love. Uh, that simple Merry Christmas is really, really pretty. And the bows fit really nice across the top of the cup. Now I will be adding greenery to my flowers, but I'll do that a little bit later on. That just for you was so perfect tucked kind of in the bottom corner of the sleeve of the cup where it's going to fit nicely with the poinsettia. So for some of these, I can go ahead and start attaching the sleeves down and then I will kind of come back and start adding the decorations to them as I go. The bows I can go ahead and finish and add on because I really don't need to do too much more. It's just the flowers I really need to kind of do additional work with. The bows, I did add some a little bit of that same foam tape behind them. One of them, it fit kind of nicely uh, right in between my layered pieces of white cardstock. This one here is going to fit nicely in between there. The other one I put closer to the sentiment. For the greenery, I did die cut those out from both the artichoke and the avocado. So I have a dark and a light green, and then I can just kind of layer them together. I'm putting just a little bit of glue over there. Now that is the Gina K Designs Connect glue that I have in a fine tip bottle. And 
just depending on where I'm putting my flower is also going to help me decide where my greenery is going to go. I'll add a little bit of foam tape behind there as well to pop that up. Like I said, I'm not worried about dimension really because these are either going to go on gift bags or uh, presents. So I'm not really worried about the dimension. So after I have everything decorated, then I can come in and start adding holes to the top because I want to be able to put a pretty twine or string through them. And I'm going to be using my good old crocodile. I have had this thing for so, so long. When I punch my hole, I want it to be just towards the top because if I go in any more, I'm going to be punching a hole through the actual uh, tag itself and I didn't want that. I just want it at the very top there where my lid is. So not through the foam tape, up towards the top where I don't have the foam tape. So I kind of line up the hole. I do always kind of turn it around, look on the back, make sure I'm centered, make sure I'm not going too far down on my tag. Now you can use any uh, type of twine, ribbon, anything you have in your crafty stash. I have this really pretty, um, I guess they maybe call it twine, but it's a white and silver mix from Simon Says Stamp. I have a couple roll of these on a spool, super pretty. So I trimmed off a piece. This first piece is actually probably longer than I need it to be. But I folded it in half and I pulled that fold through the hole from the back. I'm going to open up that loop and then pull my string through the loop. So that's going to create kind of that little knot down there. And you could tie a knot towards the top too if you wanna maybe even turn these into ornaments, I think would be really super cute. And then afterwards, I can always come back and trim off the excess if it ends up being a little bit too long. And my last finishing touch that I'm going to be adding to these is going to be adding a gold pearl to the center of my poinsettias. There is a piece in the die set mix that um, you could die cut out your center if you want, maybe add different two different colors of yellow cardstock, but I think this, just using up my gold pearls and embellishments was a really pretty touch. Now, oh my gosh, how cute are these? They are just, I love them. They're, something about minis is so cute. I am a big coffee drinker. I used to stop at the gas station all the time on my way to work and get a cup of cappuccino. My daughter loves getting cappuccino or even making her own. These could also be great for tea, though. If maybe you want to do a gift set of tea, a variety of tea for somebody, these are great for tea, too. So if you're not into coffee, you know, you can definitely do something like that. I think these are great for teacher's gifts or teacher's presents, gift bags or the presents. It just so versatile and so adorable. I will have all of the supplies that I used today listed down below in the video description along with that code from Concord and Ninth. Thank you so much for them for providing that for my viewers today. That code is only active from now until December 1st, 2023. So there is a time limit on that. So if you're looking to pick up some items, now is a great time to use that. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I'll be back soon with another video.